This lesson deals with supplemental problem 5.7. You can find this problem in the course ebook in the chapter 5 supplemental problem starting on page 7. Given this one capacitor circuit with a switch that switches from this position to this position at time t equals 0, can you find the voltage across and the current through this capacitor versus time? Recall from the chapter 5 lecture notes, we had an algorithm for solving one capacitor circuits. It involves six steps. Let's do step number one. Step one is to formulate the equations. Since we have a one capacitor circuit, the form of the solution is that of a solution of a first order differential equation, which is some a plus b times e to the minus quantity t minus t0 divided by tau. Here t0 is equal to zero. I am solving for a capacitor voltage and a capacitor currents. I'll call a in this case, A1 and B1, and then A2 and B2. They both have the same value of the time constant tau. Since I want to find the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the capacitor for all time, let me find the pre-switching conditions, that is the capacitor voltage and the capacitor current, just before the switch changes state. The switch is still in this position. We've had this circuit hooked up for a very long time. If you wait long enough, a capacitor looks like an open circuit for DC. The voltage across the capacitor is the voltage across the 24 ohm resistor. Because this is not connected, it's just kind of hanging in the air. It's not going to affect our circuit. But I do have a voltage divider because the current in this circuit flows through both the 16 and 24 ohm resistors. So the voltage across here is going to be 24 divided by 16 plus 24 times 12 volts. And that's going to be the capacitor voltage also. And that's equal to 7.2 volts. The current that's flowing in this capacitor, because it's an open circuit if you wait long enough, is zero. Step three of our algorithm is to find the initial conditions. That would be the value of V sub C and I sub C at T equals T zero equal to zero plus. So our switch is going to go from this position to this position. The voltage across the capacitor prior to the switch switching was 7.2 volts and the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. It's the same value. Now that's also what we're solving for. So that's going to be A1 plus B1 times E to the minus zero, which is just equal to one. So just A1 plus B1. I'm going to find the capacitor current. Well, if the voltage across here is 7.2, then the voltage across here is 7.2. Divide that by 24 ohms and you get 0.3 amps. The current that's flowing in this resistor and this capacitor is the current that's flowing here. But that's also the current in this 8 ohm resistor. You could find that by finding the voltage across the resistor. This node voltage is 9 and this node voltage is 7.2. The difference of those two divided by 8 would be the current. The difference is 1.8 volts, dividing by 8 ohms, I get 0.225 amps. That current is equal to this current plus this current. That's my equation down over here. Let's solve for the value of I sub C of 0 plus. This on the other side of the equation, so I have 0.225 amps and then minus 0.3, and that's minus 0 0.075, which is minus 75 milliamps. That's going to be A2 plus B2 times E to the 0, or just A2 plus B2. Step four of my algorithm is to find the final conditions. That would be my capacitor voltage and my capacitor current as t approaches infinity. The switch is closed to this position at t equals zero plus, so we're still in that position. The capacitor is in a DC circuit for a long time. It looks like an open circuit. The current in the capacitor is going to be zero. That's going to be equal to A2 plus B2 times e to the minus infinity, which is equal to A2. Now the capacitor voltage again is the voltage across the 24 ohm resistor. I've got a voltage divider again. The current in the 8 ohm and the 24 ohm is the same. My voltage across here is going to be 24 divided by 24 plus 8 times the voltage of 9 volts. That turns out to be 6.75. That's going to be equal to A1 plus B1 times e to the minus infinity, or just A1. Step five is to find the Thevenin resistance seen by the terminal of the capacitance. With all the independent sources set equal to zero. So I had a voltage source here and a voltage source here, but because the switch is in this position, this has no effect, so you can just actually not even draw it. Looking back from the terminals of the capacitor, I see 24 ohms in parallel with 8 ohms. They share the same two nodes, so they're in parallel. it would be a product over the sum, and that turned out to be six ohms. My time constant is R Thevenin times C, and that's 6 ohms times 0.33 microfarads, which is 1.98 microseconds. And step six is to find the solution using the results that I found. 
We found that A1 plus B1 was 7.2, A1 was 6.75, so we can then solve for B1. It's going to be equal to 7.2 minus 6.75, and that's 0.45. A sub C of T is A1 plus B1 times E to the minus T over tau volts. Put this in injury notation. 6.75 plus 450 milli times e to the minus t over 1.98 microseconds. So we have this true for t greater than, but also equal to zero. When t was less than zero, we found that the voltage cross capacitor was 7.2. If you evaluate this equation when t is equal to zero, you get 6.75 plus 0.45, and that's 7.2. The capacitor voltage is continuous as we pass through zero. Let's solve for the capacitor current. We found that a2 plus b2 was minus 75 milli. A2 was zero, therefore B2 is minus 75 milli. We have A2 plus B2 times E to the minus T over tau, minus 75 milli times E to the minus T over 1.98 microseconds, with the units of amps. The milli you can leave here, or you could put it over here. Now, this is true for T greater than zero, but the capacitor current can change instantaneously. We found that for T less than zero, it was equal to zero. So it goes from zero and jumps to minus 75 milliamps as the switch changes state. Let's see if we can graph the capacitor voltage. For T less than zero, I had 7.2 volts, and then I have this exponential. It starts out at 6.75 plus 0.45, again 7.2, but then as time goes on, this term drops out, and we eventually approach 6.75. Now it'll reach that as T approaches infinity, but we said in the class notes that infinity was effectively five time constants. If we multiply this by five, you get about approximately 10 microseconds. The exact value is 9.9. .9. I made a rough sketch between this point and this point to look exponential. It's not a super accurate graph, but it's the shape of the curve. I would expect you to be able to draw curves like this on a test and a homework. Just take the start point, which is the sum of these two. The steady state value is when this drops out, is over here. These two will just be connected exponentially. If we were to graph the current, it would start out at zero and it would drop down to minus 75 milliamps and it come back to zero as t approached infinity. You have an algorithm to find any voltage or any current. You could also check your answer if you wanted to with the fact that I is equal to CDVDT. I know the voltage versus time, so I can just differentiate that. So here's my expression we just solved for up over here. So the derivative of a constant is zero. Could bring the 0.45 out and take the derivative of E to the AX, which can be equal to A times E to the AX. My A is equal to minus one over tau, one over 1.98 micro, and here's that minus sign. And then here's my e to the minus t over tau. If you multiply this out and divide by this, you get a minus 75 milli times e to the minus t over 1.98 microseconds. And the units are amps, and that's the same answer we had up over here. And this is supplemental problem 5.7.